Okay, so today's questions, um, they're actually going to be on a Google form that'll be in our Google Classroom. Question one is, what is the problem at the beginning of this chapter? Question two, how was BKR able to not be noticed as an alien? And number three, what is the solution to the problem from the beginning of this chapter? So you will answer those questions in the Google Classroom and just type out your response. Okay, so today I'm going to read chapter 11, The Storage Dimension. So right now they're trapped in the um, TV and then BKR shows up. So the storage dimension. Before I could sort myself out from the piles of stuff surrounding me, I heard a click followed by a laugh. The click, it turned out, was made by BKR, snapping the television screen back in place. The laugh came from BKR, alias Billy Becker, who was pressing his face against the screen and staring in at us. As I watched, he pushed his face closer and closer, flattening his features against the surface. Soon, his nose was spreading out like a blob of melting ice cream, but he kept pressing until his smile had smushed from one side of the screen to the other, and his eyes looked like a pair of fried eggs with blue yolks. Stop, I cried, it's disgusting. BKR giggled, a wild, high-pitched sound that sent a chill down my spine. Then he began to peel his face away from the screen. That's when I realized it was a mask, a Billy Becker mask that had been smushed across the screen. As he pulled the mask away, I could see the real face of BKR, the alien criminal my tiny companions had crossed a galaxy to capture. His skin was blue. He had orange spikes instead of hair. Other than that, he looked a lot like Shirley Temple. What a nice surprise, he said, leering in at us. That is Captain Gracker. You've got with you, isn't it, Rod? I thought I recognized him when that silly Arnie pulled him out of your backpack yesterday. Let the boy go, BKR, shouted Gracker. He is of no concern to you. I glanced at Gracker in surprise. It was the first time he had given any indication he cared what happened to me. BKR snorted. What does it matter whether he's of any concern to me? I have him and that's enough. Of all the things I had experienced so far, I think the coldness in BKR's voice was the most frightening yet. No, he continued. The real concern is what am I going to do with you now? Here's a picture. So right now they're trapped inside the TV and BKR is looking in the screen, but the TV isn't an actual TV. I don't want to leave you alone in my closet. I've got things stored there that might actually be of use to you. But should I bring you out here to take care of? Or should I just blow a hole through the back of the closet and let you drift off into the storage dimension? That is the decision I have to make. Madame Pong had climbed onto my shoulder. I felt her shudder at BKR's last suggestion, which was even scarier than the coldness in his voice. If what he was planning was that frightening to her, I knew I sure didn't want to experience it. What's the storage dimension like, I whispered. An interplanetary junkyard, she replied, her voice equally soft. I thought of the junkyard on the other side of seldom seen. It was pretty interesting. You can find almost anything you want there, added Snout. Only there's no air in most of it, so we'd probably be dead before we came across anything useful. You're awfully calm about this, I whispered. He bent his nose to the right and said, I've never improved a situation by worrying about it. Not having Snout's philosophical training, my own level of fear was quickly building toward pure panic. The confrontation with BKR was not improved by Gracker shouting, This is Captain Gracker speaking. Surrender now or face justice at the hands of the Galactic Patrol. Madame Pong sighed. BKR laughed hysterically. Well, I've made up my mind, he said. Enjoy the storage dimension, everyone. BKR, stop, cried Madame Pong. He ignored her. Holding up what looked like a standard television remote control, he put his finger directly over a button. Smiling in at us, he said, bye-bye, boys and girls. Before he could lower his finger and send us into the storage dimension, the good ship Ferkel zoomed into the room and smacked against his head. BKR screamed with rage as he fell out of sight. The Ferkel circled the room, 
then stopped in front of the TV. Hovering in midair, it aimed a purple ray at the screen holding us in the storage dimension. It shimmered and began to melt. But before Ferkel could finish the job, a blue hand reached up and swatted it sideways. Quick rod, cried Madame Pong. Push on the barrier. I hesitated. If it was melting, it would probably be hot enough to burn my hands off. Hurry, cried Cracker. It's our only hope. Well, having no hands was better than being totally dead. I lunged forward. To my surprise, the screen wasn't hot at all. It popped out and I burst through the front of the TV like some full-size jack-in-the-box. Good work, Rod, cried Gracker, zooming over me with his flying pack. I didn't have time to appreciate the compliment. I had stumbled over the edge of the opening and landed on top of BKR. He looked as if he was interested in making sure I never did anything like that again, as long as I lived, mostly by making how long I lived really, really short. Grabbing my skull between his hands, which were astonishingly strong, he began to squeeze. I don't have any bugs, Rod, he yelled, so why don't I just squish your head instead? The pain was incredible. Stop, I screamed, stop. Unhand that earthling, roared Gracker, flying overhead and zapping Billy with his ray gun. Ow, cried Billy. He slapped his right hand to the side of his head where the tiny ray of light had struck him. It's hard to squeeze something between your hands when only one of them is in place. I took the chance to roll out of his grip. Billy bellowed with rage, but before he could grab me, the Ferkel sailed in front of him. To my astonishment, an orange ray came out of the bottom and sucked Gracker into the ship. Suddenly, I realized that Madame Pong and Snout were nowhere to be seen. Had the ship pulled them in as well? I feared that they would abandon me in the hands of Billy Becker. That wasn't fair, I now realize. The aliens considered me one of them and were planning to take care of me, which is why the ship flew over and pointed the ray at me. Only now it was purple instead of orange. I couldn't figure out what they were up to. Were they going to use the tractor beam to pick me up and then fly out of there? Suddenly, I noticed that the room was getting bigger. The chairs seemed to be growing, the walls getting farther away, the ceiling getting higher. The Ferkel was growing too. That was when I realized nothing was growing. I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller until I was about two inches high. Before I could figure out what it felt like to be only two inches high, I heard Billy Becker cry, a bug, I hate bugs, it's squishing time. It wasn't until I saw his giant hand hurtling toward my head that I realized I was the bug he was shouting about. Which brings us to chapter 12. Okay, so the questions are on the uh, Google form in our Google Classroom that you can answer and send back to me. And remember, this is just for fun. This is um, optional, um, but I would love it if you uh, answer the questions because the questions that I'm writing are um, fitting to where our reading lessons are in our, in our packet. So next week, we're gonna be getting to problem and solution. And so um, in a couple weeks ago, we did cause and effect. So that's why the questions that I write for this book kind of correlate with our skills that we're practicing with our other um, reading activities that we're doing in the packet. Okay, um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.